Alright, welcome to Beyond the Map, powered by Astro Gaming. My name is Jared Dunphy, and today we're going over the brand new map, Tyrant, from the Ghosts of Meridian DLC pack that just came out today. Um, so I tried going into matchmaking, and uh, couldn't find a game uh, quick enough, so right now I'm just playing a custom game by myself. I already went through the map a little bit. And uh, so for now, I'm going to be going over my first impressions, uh, some of the strategies that I think will apply to this map, some of the jumps that I found, and uh, some more. But uh, once I get more time to this map, I'll probably do an updated guide next week going over what works, what doesn't, and maybe some new tricks that I find later on. So let's uh, make this pretty quick. I'll, I'll be brief and go over as much as possible in the fastest amount of time possible. So uh, right off the bat, we can tell that this map is a symmetrical a uh, very small arena map, which we haven't really seen a lot of in Halo 5. We've seen a lot of maps like Truth that there are a lot of uh, open areas and a lot of long sight lines, so you have to rely on that pistol, you know. Uh, but as you can see, this is the center of the map, and this is a pretty tight area. There's actually an explosive barrel right here that looks really pretty when you blow it up, but... Uh, uh, once again, this map, there's a huge emphasis uh, on uh, tighter areas when you get closer to the center. So as you can see right here, this this hallway, the staircase is very narrow. We have a tight corner here that has a very uh, tight area to work with. And, uh, you know, just uh, basing this on uh, what we've seen in the past uh, from other maps, uh, Torque comes to mind. We've seen a lot of people that just naturally use their autos at close quarters. But then uh, on this map, when you start fanning out towards the outer rim, that's when you have longer sight lines. And that's when you want to rely on that pistol and that BR and that light rifle and even the sniper rifle that spawns back here. Um, but once again, uh, I haven't played this map yet in matchmaking with uh, real people or uh, people that you know actually know how to play the game really well. But just judging from... Uh, past experience, it appears that uh, you'll see a lot of people rely on these autos in the close quarters areas, but they'll use the pistol once the, the sight lines uh, uh, grow longer. So, uh, as I was saying before, as you make your way out toward the outer rim, you have these longer sight lines, and uh, there's a lot of long range weapons to work with. We have the sniper rifle that spawns every two minutes, there's a BR in this window, and there's also a light rifle way way back here if you take the man can into this platform there's a light rifle right in the middle right back here so you have a lot of long uh, range weapons on the outside and then you have a lot of close quarters weapons on the inside i think one of the most important weapons is actually down here the scatter shot the scatter shot is going to be huge just picking it up right here there's a tight corner this is deadly if somebody tries to contest you um but the thing is, even though there's a lot of tight areas and a lot of long sight lines, there are a lot of cool windows that you can work with, too. Um, you can see right here, I can look down into their base. Uh, there's this window that looks into the base as well. There's a lot you can work with. So even though the map has a lot of tight areas, there's a lot of open sight lines as well. The map isn't necessarily open, but there's a lot of open sight lines that are very limited in a way. So I can see all the way over into the their side of the scattershot room, but... It's, I can't see much more, you know. Uh, speaking of the windows, you can actually jump through these and uh, get onto the other side. If you're very talented, you can actually do a mason jump all the way to the other side. I did it once, but it's very risky because you can hit the top of this and fall down. So I just recommend jumping over to this and jumping uh, down over here. Uh, this window as well, you can get into this and drop down to the scatter shot. Um, you can even make your way up. You want to jump off of this part right here if you walk into it and then you want to make your way over to this rail or try to clamber into the window, whatever works. Um, but as you can see, you can get in there just like that. You can get in through here the other way if you want to jump and uh, uh, thrust through. Um, and then there's actually another window over here at the top middle, which is very interesting because it feels useless in a way. If you're, in, if you're top middle, you can see the snipe area a little bit. You can kind of see the ramp. But the cool thing is, you can do it from the other end. If you're at the sniper area and you know there's a guy top middle, you can start chucking nades in there. And then when you come in, see how these grenades are blowing up right in the center or on the sides? This is a great way to apply some pressure on the enemy team, especially if they're holding this down. Which I think you'll see a lot of people over here, because when you're in the middle, you have access to that scatter shot. Um, there's plasma grenades that spawn right here. So if you have the plasma grenades, you can potentially, and I did this when I was going through the map the first time, I might not do it this time, but you can nade the sniper rifle to top middle. I might mess it up here, we'll see. 
Oh no, I got it. Awesome. So you can nade sniper rifle from top middle and hold it down. And if you're playing CTF, you can apply some pressure by pushing up a little bit with the sniper rifle. Uh, you know, you might want to move over here or something instead. Uh, so I showed you guys the window jumps. There are a couple other jumps that are pretty straightforward. They're intentionally designed, but I think a lot of people might miss them. And it has to do with this outer area with the man cannon. So the man cannon shoots you up over to here. You can jump to the rock. From this rock, you can jump over to that a little platform. Uh, but you can also jump from here over to here. You can jump from this rock to any of these platforms. You can even jump onto this little ledge that sticks out. So uh, with this map, judging from the way it's designed and the way it's uh, laid out, it appears this is going to be a very uh, chaotic uh, map, which we haven't seen a lot in Halo 5, and I think we honestly needed it. A lot of the maps are very uh, one-dimensional in a way, and I feel like with this map, since it's going to be so chaotic, there's going to be a lot of different strategies being developed where some people, they might focus a lot on the scatter shot and focus on the inside while other teams they're going to hold down top middle and try to you know lock down the sniper rifle or whatever which i just messed up that nade completely but um yeah so i feel like with this map it's it's it has a nice uh uh dynamic strategy to it where you can hold down the outside and focus on your team shot and your pistols or you can rely on your close quarters weapons in the inner part of the map um Besides that, uh, the other things I wanted to mention, I don't know if they'll stick. Um, I don't know if it'll apply, but a lot of the things that I talked about, I'm pretty sure it will work when you go into matchmaking. I'll probably save the other things for the updated guide when I know for sure. Like I said, the window jumps, that makes sense. Uh, you know, the using the scatter shot in the inner part of the map, that makes sense. Other things, I don't know. I'm going to have to try it and see. Um, but actually, there is one more thing I want to touch on uh, since we're uh, uh, going to be ending this soon. So if you run into the man cannon, you get thrown over to the light rifle right here. You land on this platform, and it's actually kind of vulnerable. If there's a guy running over here from his base, you can easily get naded and get taken down. Um, there's one simple trick that a lot of people don't use enough, and is uh, it's, it's using your thruster pack while you're in the air, and you can fly all the way over to top middle. So you can go from bottom middle, where the scatter shot spawns, all the way to top middle in about two seconds. Uh, so once again, if you're focusing on top middle and you want to use these plasma grenades, you know, you can nade that sniper rifle, lock, lock down the map and, and do whatever you want. But um, once again, I do feel like this map is going to be very chaotic uh, since there are so many uh, tight areas and a lot of sight line breakers. I feel like it's going to be almost impossible to completely lock down your opponent unless you spread your teammates too thin but if you do that then there's a huge risk involved if one person dies you know say we have one guy on the snipe side trying to hold down the side and he dies now there's a huge hole in our defense and we're falling apart so i think this is going to play similar to some of the maps we've seen in the past where it's just back and forth action I, I can see this being a really fun slayer map but at the same time since there are so many close quarters areas it could completely grind it to a halt because of the radar and whatnot so you might see a lot of people slow it down uh, it really depends on you know what people want to do and what weapons they're looking for and how they want to play so just keep that in mind uh, you'll probably see a huge variety of strategies you might see people that slow it down you might see people that play super chaotic um, so J basically the one thing that i will say is definitely when you're on the outside use that pistol try to get a br try to get the light rifle use that sniper rifle the sniper rifle honestly could be a great defensive tool from this angle you can completely lock down the map as you can see from here if, if they're on the light rifle side or over in top middle you can do a lot of damage um but once you get on the inside, I would definitely recommend trying to get that scatter shot, trying to use your AR or anything else that can work at close range. Because uh, once again, like a pistol fight, uh, you know, right around this corner, it could n not work out. You know, it, with an AR, you're going to be doing a lot of consistent damage, and that's what a lot of people are looking for. They just want to do damage quickly and uh, you know try to uh, put a damper on the team as quickly as possible. So that's all I really have for this episode of Beyond the Map, guys. Uh, once again, I haven't been able to play the map yet because of uh, 
uh, matchmaking not giving me the map to play. But once I get enough time into the map, I'll do an updated guide with some more tips that will I, that I know actually work. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, this is just theory. And uh, you know, obviously, if you guys have any success, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions about this map that you want to uh, have answered or anything else, as always, just leave a comment in the comment section below, and uh, I'll be sure to look at it. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching as I fall off the map. And uh, actually, there is one more thing I want to mention. There is a little Easter egg on this map. Uh, the first time I loaded it up. I'm gonna go over to the blue base. Um, there actually is a small Easter egg. There's a Easter egg in the main menu where there's a, a, a grunt that's flying through the air. And uh, when this map first starts, you'll see that grunt flying by on the blue side around here where I'm looking at. So if you have, if you happen to go into this map in a custom game or if you're on the blue team in, in a matchmaking, you can actually see that. You'll see that same grunt still floating in space going all the way around and it's pretty funny. So, uh, once again, that's all I have for this episode of Beyond the Map, guys. Uh, like I was saying before, this is just theory. I haven't played the map in matchmaking yet. This is just from past experience with other maps and uh, you know all of the Halo knowledge that I've uh, accumulated over the years. And uh, hopefully some of the stuff uh, sticks. But if not, I'll be doing an updated guide probably next week once I get more time into it. So, once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.